Welcome back to This Week in Agribusiness. Higher food prices. We've all noticed the price of food going up at the grocery store over the past several years, but how are we responding to it? That was the question from the May edition of the Consumer Food Insights from the Center for Food Demand at Purdue University. Joining us now to talk through the details is Dr. Joseph Balaktas. He serves as a professor for ag economics and he's the director of the Center for Food Demand. And Dr. Balaktas, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Mike. It's happy to be, I'm happy to be with you. Let's talk a little bit first about the Consumer Food Insight Survey. Doctor, what is that? What is Purdue trying to do? Uh, so the, the Consumer Food Insight Survey is a monthly survey of about 1,200 Americans um, uh, that where we ask consumers about their behavior and preferences in food markets. Uh, it allows us to keep our finger on the pulse uh, of those markets and, and, and understand um, uh, what's happening uh, in, in the food space. And there is certainly a lot happening. Prices are higher. This has been a big issue in the economy for the past several months. What was the, what was the question to the survey uh, takers here in uh, this month's CFI? Yeah, so there's a set of questions that we ask every, every month about um, uh, behavior and, and their experience. Uh, this particular month, we also ask uh, about how consumers are perceiving inflation, food inflation in particular, um, and how they're responding to it in their in their experiences. All right, well, let's get the details. First, official figures. Over 2023, Doctor, what was the official rate of food inflation? So using uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, Consumer Price Index, um, uh, food prices overall were up in May. That's the most recent data. Uh, 2.1% over the previous May, so the over, over a one-year period, food prices are up 2.1%. Um, uh, they're, they're up less than that, 0.1% uh, for, for groceries uh, and more than that for, for restaurant food, 4.4 4 percentage points higher. Gotcha. But that is coming down. That rate of inflation is slowing. Dr. Balagtas, do consumers feel as though that rate is slowing? Yeah, consumers do feel it's uh, inflation is slowing. Um, a year ago, they were telling us that food price inflation was uh, six or so percent. They were actually a little high. They're still a little high. They're, the, the inflation that consumers are telling us they feel is higher than those official numbers, um, but lower than what they're telling us a year ago. So they, they, they are telling us prices are slowing, uh, inflation slowing. All right. And of course, everybody responds to these higher prices in a different way. What did you see generationally with regard to how consumers are dealing with this? Yeah. Um, so first of all, uh, not everybody responds. Uh, and one of the generational differences we see um, is that the oldest generations, baby boomers and older, um, uh, uh, are most likely not to respond. Almost 40 percent of baby boomers and older um, uh, not that they're not experiencing food prices uh, rising, but they're, they're not really changing their behavior. Uh, so that's one generational difference. Um, we see Gen X um, uh, a little more uh, active looking for coupons and deals. Uh, we see Gen Z uh, not using coupons and deals so much, but shopping across stores, looking, looking for lower prices at, at different across stores. Interesting. So we are seeing at, at least some of these groups uh, take a response from these higher prices. You mentioned, uh, Dr. Balaktas, the expectations of inflation. They have been there. They've been persistent. Looking out into the future, do consumers still expect that inflationary increase to be there? And if so, by how much? Yeah, so um, uh, food price expect inflation expectations are down about a percentage point from a year ago. Um, uh, they're Consumers are telling us they think food prices are going to rise at 4% uh, over the next year. Uh, that's about double what we've experienced over the past year. Um, uh, but we, they've been predicting higher for the last uh, year or so. And so um, they see that the price is coming down, but not as fast as, uh, as what the official numbers are saying. 
All right. Well, now that we've got this information, now that we can see how people are reacting to these prices, Dr. Bagtas, what can we do with this information? What's next? Uh, one thing is just to try to understand what consumers are doing. Um, uh, you know, there's there's uh, a, a little bit of, of a debate about why economists uh, like me are 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 uh, are predicting. Uh, or are, are measuring food price inflation that's so much lower than people's experience. Obviously, people's are, people are experts uh, in their own experience. We're not telling people that, they're, that they misunderstand their own lives. Um, but we might be using terms slightly differently, and that, that could explain part of the difference, right? If, if I ask someone what, their, what food prices were in June last year, they might not know exactly, but they know prices have fallen or have risen a lot uh, over over that time period um, and over the last three years, food prices are about twenty five percent higher um, than they were uh, just before the pandemic. Uh, uh, so it, we'll continue to to survey consumers and try to understand how they're dealing with food prices um, and and. and uh, into the future. Absolutely. As time goes on, Dr. Joseph Balagtas, director of the Center for Food Demand at Purdue University. Thanks so much for joining us here this week and explaining the most recent CFI. Good to be with you, Mike.